Hi everyone, my name is Lara and I'm an investment research analyst. Today I'm going to be sharing with you 11 tips that will help you on your journey to financial freedom. So financial freedom looks different for everyone and it's personal. Financial freedom looks like being able to make decisions without thinking too much about money. For example, picking a new job that makes me happy over a job that pays more. Tip number one is to have an emergency fund. I know we've probably heard it time and time again, have an emergency fund, but it's very important to have some money that you can fall back on in case of an emergency. And an emergency is something like your car breaking down or something your house breaking down at least you have some money that you can fall back on. You can start with having a goal of £1,000 for an emergency fund, so make sure you allocate a portion of your salary towards this every month. And once you've reached that goal, you can build up your emergency fund to about three to six months worth of your expenses every month. Step number two is paying off debt and avoiding debt. This period is a great time to start paying off debt. We're spending more time at home and less money, outside at restaurants because they now close at 10 so it's a great time to start contributing towards your debt repayments. You save more money in interest the quicker that you pay off debt and there are a couple ways that you can do this. The first way is to try and tackle high interest debt first. It might be easier for you to pay off the smallest loan first and this can help you build momentum to pay off bigger loans. It might be helpful to use a spreadsheet to keep track of your debt and keep track of the loans that you have. But I personally made a spreadsheet when I had debts to pay off and I made a note of how much I needed to pay off and the amount of my salary that I wanted to contribute to it every month and it's a good feeling at the end of the month where you can clear off that debt. It means you have more money that you can invest with every month. Tip number three is preparing a budget. Having a budget is an easy way to see where you're spending and where you need to cut back on. There's a 50, 30, 20 budgeting rule that you can use to help you with budgeting. Tip number four is pay yourself first. It means dedicating a specific amount of your salary to yourself. And this could be 10% of your salary, you make sure you pay it to yourself before paying Zara, before paying Amazon, you have that money for yourself and that will help you on your journey to becoming financially free. Tip number five is to automate your direct debits. So if you're trying to save for something, make sure you set up a direct debit for it. And this is helpful if you want to get into the habit of saving without thinking about it. Your credit score by getting a credit card but you have to make sure that your credit card utilisation is below, some people say, 30%. This means if the credit card maximum is £1,000, you're only using 300 of that £1,000. Uh, to let lenders know, rather, that you have this amount of money, but you're only spending 30% of it, which looks good to lenders. So that's the way that you can build your credit score. And you can also build your credit score by making sure you pay your bills on time, for example, your phone bill, making sure that you don't miss a payment. You can also build your credit score by being registered to vote. Tip number six would be making sure you put money into a pension. Pension is basically a long-term saving plan with tax relief. This means some of your money that would have gone to the government in tax is now going into your pension. Make sure you contact your employer and find out what the maximum pension contributions are and if you're able to, try and max out your contributions. It's important to make sure you contribute as much as you can into your pension and it's better to start as early as you can because of compound interest. Compound interest is really important because it basically means the money that you put in that's generating interest will make more money and that money will make more money and in the long run it's beneficial for you. As a young person it's easier if you don't have any other commitments to contribute to your pensions now and also compound interest with starting early. Tip number seven would be to invest and focus on buying income generating assets as opposed to liabilities. So investing is putting your money in financial schemes with expectations of generating a profit. Examples of income generating assets would be putting your money to stocks and shares, property, and examples of liabilities would be something such as buying a car. Buying a car is not an asset because it doesn't generate any income and once you your car leaves the parking lot it loses value in money 
Tip number eight would be making sure you learn something about personal finance every week. They say knowledge is power and knowledge is power. So it's important to read, you can read books, watch YouTube videos, read blog posts to help you and educate you on all things personal finance. For specific examples of books and also YouTube channels that are really helpful and blog posts, check the description box below. Tip number nine would be to set financial goals. It's always easy to work towards something if you have the goal in mind. For example, if you want to save £100,000 a year, write it down, you can use a spreadsheet, and make sure you contribute towards that every month. So different things work for different people. For me personally, I like using spreadsheets. I work with spreadsheets every single day with work. So that's just easy for me to visualize. And I have my goal um, in the spreadsheet and I also have things that I'm trying to work towards. And I think, how am I going to achieve that? So I kind of reverse engineer and work backwards. Tip number 10, it's important to have different streams of income. You need to have multiple sources of income because things are very unpredictable. If you, for example, lose your job, it means you can have other streams of income that you can rely on. My main source of income is my salary, but I also make some extra money from selling things on Depop. Another source of income is an Amazon e-commerce business. Other streams of income are writing blogs, and also proofreading articles before they go out to press. Tip number 11 would be living below your means, which basically means not spending more money than you earn. It's really easy to want to spend more money when you earn more money, but it's important to make sure you spend less than you earn so you have more money to invest every month. For people who feel overwhelmed with their loans, I would say you should just start small. Whatever you can, just make sure you can con you contribute that. Even if it's just like £10, £20, something is better than nothing. I'd say just start small and do the best you can. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Bye!